Okay, this game was a very interesting game indeed. And this really felt like a tournament game that I had played against a high rated player again. And it was almost identical all the way to the end. From the start to the big end, it, it absolutely fantastic. So we developed the knight. And they come through with nice small pawn maneuvers here. And it wasn't very often that I saw this actually in a real life tournament when I played the uh, my opponent back then. And similar type pawn maneuvers were made on the flanks. I thought, oh, okay, this is um, not unusual, but it's taken me back. So bring the bishop through as we do, just uh, to defend. And then another pawn move, I'm thinking, oh my days. Look at all these weaknesses, but you have to be able to do something about it, you know? It's only weak if you can do something about it. So, we castle. They bring the Fianchetto through, so I'm thinking this is going to be a long, slow, drawn-out process with this bishop-type move, but do they lose a bit of tempo doing that? I'm fairly comfortable with them losing tempo, developing. Uh, do we develop our knight, or do we push through the centre ourselves with the pawns? You know, do we push here, then hide behind with the knight? So we bring the knight up, because we want to get it into the action. More pawn pushes. So, yep, there's, if you use pawn pushes correctly, then they are quite devastating. But you really do have to develop your other pieces as well to help support them. So at this moment, I'm not feeling too bad. Yes, they are making their way towards my king's side. Uh, so I'm not going to ignore that fact but at the same time I can just bring my king to safety if I need to just to avoid any of that so that I could bring my knight, my knight down you know so bring my king across bring my knight down if he's looking to champion this area so we bring the king across so that I'm not losing any sleep over position play for the knight in any way shape then another pawn move. So I'm still feeling really good, but I'm not all underestimating this type of maneuver because, like I said, I played this in an over the board game many years ago. And another pawn move. Opening the kingside area at some later stage that has got to be a benefit for us. Very identical. I'm not saying exactly the moves were made, but very identical type position and manoeuvres. So we take it off the board, trying to open up space in front of the king. They take back. So now we do have open space in front of the king. And they're not near castling at the minute, but they may be comfortable with that position. All we know is there's loads of space around here, around here, and through the center that could be taken advantage of. But it's how we work our pieces together, that was the key thing. But they could also be lulling us into a false sense of security, thinking that yes, those spaces are free to take, but I'm gonna get your king another way at the minute my king isn't home alone so we can look to attack so I thought well I'm going to attack the knight you know obviously he's going to move the knight gets it out of the way but it's making them do something that they didn't really want to do at that moment in time so he could still kingside castle it's not much of it. No, he can't actually. Sorry, the bishop's blocking that. So his king now is kind of stuck in that position. So for a moment, it does look a bit dire. I mean, if this knight could move here, then you've got the queen touching onto the king type situation. We've got to be safe. 
Got to be safe and make sure we do the right stuff. Attacking the knight. Making more space for the bishop. Oops. So making more space for the bishop still, still keeping that diagonal, stopping the king from castling for that moment. Obviously the pawn probably may push down, keep the diagonal, then he can block it off that way. So capture, all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Yeah, so the pawn does push it down, oops, there's a wrong button, uh, does push down. Simply bringing it back as we said, keeping the diagonal. Did expect him to drop here, but smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong, can it? So he attacks the bishop, but then obviously that opens up space for the rook potentially put putting a check on or the queen. So now he blocks down with the pawn, leaving his king a little bit open at the minute. So the rook comes through putting a check on, so what's the pieces, the bishop can't come here, bishop can't go there, so he's going to have to move the king it looks like. So it's putting a bit of pressure on the king but it looks like he can kind of escape and get around here. But not without getting a check on it first. So the bishop takes, bishop had to take really because they would have basically lost out. Oh, being a bit previous with the rook take there, okay so we captured. For a take with the rook rather than the pawn because it's owning the file is the rook. Queen does have a check on the king here, they're not obviously maybe supporting here, depending on what we decide to do on that side. But blocking off the Scud missile first makes sense to us. And rooks definitely don't have any place in the centre of the board unless it's to your um, benefit. I mean, If we push through here onto the pawn, we can make some space and maybe attack the rook. Just four processes. Queen still does have this check here. So queen swings around the back and so it's many thought processes but um, again there is the potential for this type thing here so this is why things have probably taken a little bit longer also getting this rook here which one is the best one um basically turning out that basically the queen attacking the king putting a check on the king first i'm checking my position first then i'm putting the check on the king so position checks captures threat support blocking um works out quite nicely for us 
so the bishop comes down so again looking at the position first and then seeing whether or not we can actually attack something to capture or So Rook could come here, it's got like a 2 on 1 situation going on, attacking through, but the Knight is there protecting, but you could just do that as a mini threat. This is also an interesting situation because of the Bishop attacking the Rook, but that could be later potatoes. So doubling the Rooks, looking for position. And they moved in quick, attacking the queen. Could look to exchange off the queen now, because we are looking. could look to trade down. Could attack the pawn here, because it's got no protection on it. Still making space, maybe to attempt to come here. Queen's a bit urgent about getting the old situation of exchanging. So positionally it looks like well we shouldn't really have a problem exchanging here now because his pieces are a little bit tied up, his king's in a little bit of a shell. But this rook here is this rook here is the one that probably is going to cause him a bit of an issue because it's in the centre of the board, not really doing anything. So we should be able to just take that queen off the board and be happy as Larry. Yeah, bad position. Chomping at the bit to get this off. Don't have to take though. We'll take and then if he doesn't, if he takes back rooks, probably still gonna be here, take there. So once captured, Rook captures, push this pawn up, open up that king, maybe even, maybe even go here. So a few moves to be thinking about. Move orders key. So when it's all jumbled up like this, you think that you're winning and then suddenly somehow they just come out with something that dislodges your position completely. Mindful no flight square for the king so captured captured so how do we maintain the advantage we did like this move so pushing up here which should work quite nicely and then the push down um, quite comfortable just actually grabbing the pawn here because at the end of the day, the king can take this pawn back at some point. And there's nothing that's really getting in the way. Rook's not there. So I don't need to panic if he does take. So let's just grab. Yep, so we grabbed. King moves back, so not wearing any of them apples. Still mindful at the end of the day, Bishop now obviously looking to potentially come in and attack this rook. Being mindful it's probably going to come here but we can push the pawn and the bishop is supporting it. And then the rook is so jammed in, it's not even in the game at all. So bring the bishop here and the rook moves instantly. And we'll just bring the bishop to um, pawn to safety. So at this point they could take, obviously. But they actually grab the pawn here. So we can take back with the... Oops. 
bit too quick there. <laughs> Obviously we can take back the pawn because nothing else is there protecting it. And what we didn't want to happen was this bishop coming here protecting it. And then we're stuck. So we grabbed and the rook moves back but obviously it's moved into the line of fire of the bishop. And this was the kind of thing that happened to the higher rated player that I was playing. They got themselves so tied up in a, a little bit of a bundle um, around their king that eventually something had to give. So the knights moved. So currently we're up the exchange, but still, it's not a, I pressed that by accident there, it's not a completely winning thing. I mean, the gauge bar is showing it is, but in my head, he's still got like, he's got three pieces on the board. We've got three pieces, uh, minor pieces, pawns, um, bits scrabbled around. They could do something if they really wanted to. So the knight moves, so again, you could look at it and go, well, you could trade down now because you've got two rooks, he's got a bishop and a rook. More times out of 10, if I've got two rooks and they've got a bishop and a rook, I should be able to make it work. But it all depends on the position of the pieces. Currently, the, my rooks are nicely linked up, so I should be able to make it work. But there's no guarantees. But trading down seems to be, for me, a key thing to be doing. It saves any confusion later on. So the king comes down. No well, captures the bishop. One of many things, could be thinking this, probably just taking here. Can't push up because obviously the king's just gonna take. And there's no other support mechanism for it at this moment. So we bring the rook through now because the pawn cannot take. So they brought their rook back. And it can't take because obviously it's got the pin through to the king. So now we can capture. And at this point we're looking favourable at these pawns here. Still does have his rook. Looking to dishevel again, so they're probably getting a bit fed up with having this pin because the pawn can't take. So very identical to what actually happened in real life in a previous game so I've almost felt like I was going back home again it's nice when you can remember certain games um, just the general feel of the game it might not be you know spot on exact exact but the general idea of it um, just makes you remember the game the actual concept that comes about so we put a little bit of a pin through I think he's getting fed up with us putting pins through on his king so the king moves. So we can capture the pawn. If the bishop takes, then the rook takes. Bishop hides away. Safe in the comfort of the rook. Now we can start championing these pawns, pushing them up, li linking up to this pawn and maybe then start pushing this pawn here. So this was the element of, I think, experience as well. 
So all the games I've played, they do have some sort of relevance to the future games, the current games that I'm playing. Um, always remembering how it made me feel, what what should I have done, what can I do better, and it all sort of stands you in good stead. So we captured, captured, and we could have taken the pawn with the king, but I thought, well, why give him a pawn for free? Uh, so I attacked the rook. Oops. Way too fast. Now this particular position, I ended up in a draw in this type of position for some strange reason or the other. I think it was a slightly different position, but um, I had my two rooks and he had his king on the back. I think he had another rook actually on there, but his rook was in a different position. But I ended up drawing the thing when I should have utilized the technique that I'm going to use now. But I didn't know the technique back then. And it's simple, obviously. Okay, so. So we've got the rook up, so it's come down attacking, so let's attack it again. And really now, checkmate is going to be a little bit of a situation, or it's just going to lose pieces. Have I gone too far? I think I have, haven't I? I have. It's because I'm not moving fast enough. <laughs> okay, so we're there. I'm just rushing to try and get to the end, but you probably can see the end anyway. It's nothing great or grand or anything like that. But it's nice to know that those types of positions. Just bring this here. So now we're on the verge of basically having basically two rooks against the opponent rather than one. Because now he will lose his rook from that nice little position play. Again, this is probably like the previous game where you say, you know, you can go, oh, well, you're out and out winning now. You know, that's not impressive. It, believe me, it's impressive if you can do this over the board with a cool head, not make any blunders find the appropriate positions not get stalemate then you're on to a winner i have seen many of these games get stalemated yep just because the person either got overconfident you know going for you know going for a queen and the damn their king can't even move you know so you have to be mindful of that okay so we're pushing up making sure his king's got plenty of space to move around yep yeah, so it's got plenty of plenty of boxes so now you can enjoy and savor the ending like my five minute a move guy you can savor the opportunity you don't have to rush it and make a mistake by speeding So obviously we can put a check on the king now with the queen. Closing down the spaces to which it can move. And then obviously the rook just needs to come to the centre and then that will be checkmate. So that's the game. <laughs>